So our first equation is fillet weld sizes, and by far we're starting with the easiest ones. Now the c script exams are known to ask questions around calculate uh, the leg length size or calculate the float thickness size based on them giving you one of the values. So definitely something you need to have in your head. So here we're looking at leg length and float thickness. And because this is a triangle, what we can do is take leg length and calculate throat thickness, or take throat thickness and calculate the designed leg length. So the equation here, when we want leg length, is to do 1.414 times the throat thickness, and throat thickness equals 0 0.707 times the leg length, and they calculate back and forward between each other give you your designed values. Might not be what you've measured, but it's what the drawing intended. So here are some examples. If you wanna have a go at running through them, pause the video now and we'll come back and we'll skip through the answers quickly. The next one is slightly more complicated. Here's our ultimate tensile strength. Again, an example of a question would be a tensile test failed at a maximum applied load of 230 kilonewtons. The test sample was a rectangular bar of 15 millimeters times 20 millimeters. What is the UTS value recorded? So, we're given all the information here, but there's some little tricks with the numbers they try to catch you out on. So our equation is the maximum load applied over our cross-sectional area. Here, we have a max load applied of 230 kilonewtons, but we'll write it as newtons, so that's 230,000 newtons. And our cross-sectional area is 15 times 20. When we put them into the calculator, what we'll get is 766.6 .6 newtons a millimetre squared. So we keep our, our, keep our units of our newtons in our square uh, cross-sectional area. Again, the thing here is to remember that when we put it in the equation, we move from kilonewtons to newtons. Uh, sometimes there is two answers. One will have be in newtons, one will be in kilonewtons, and they want you to make sure you can you can apply the right numbers in your equation. Again, here are some examples of different types of sections which have been tensile tested. Have a go, and we'll come back, and I'll bring up the numbers. So here's the answers for this this table. Now, the one to make special note of is the 40 kilonewton line here, because here we have a hollow section, a tube or a pipe or something like that. Thing to remember, and it's a very common mistake that even the mechanical test houses make, and that's to apply it, the equation as a solid bar, not a hollow bar. And you end up with some weird and wonderful uh, values being spat out the other end. Number three, we have elongation percentage. It's again tied to our tensile tests. So here we have a tensile sample ready to be tested and we mark the gauge length on the sample. We take the tensile test, hit next, it then breaks and we put our sample back together and we measure the new gauge length. So now we have two bits of information, our gauge length in our increased gauge length. And that can be put straight into our equation. So here is elongation percentage equals a change in length, which is your new length minus your original, divided by your original length. We take that number, times it by 100 uh, to make it a percentage. So like I said, your original gauge length and your new gauge length. 
So here is a table again to have a have a go at. So pause it here, have a work through, and we'll review the answers in a moment. And here we go, here's the answers. Okay, our final one is maximum cap height. Now this is normally the most complicated when we come to explain it in C-suite classes. Um, it's fairly straightforward if you just take it in two bits of the equation. So a question is normally asked along these sort of lines that give you a lot of text to read. But really, the only thing you need is the equation they want you to apply and the values they would like you to insert. So here, H is the cap height we've measured and B is our weld width. So what we're going to do is use this equation to say is the height I've measured compatible and acceptable to the specification allowance? So here we have two parts of the equation. The first part in red is going to give you what your maximum value can be. So it's one millimeter plus 0 0.1 times B, and where B is the width of our excess weld metal. But no matter what, that number cannot be above five millimeters in this example. So if I was to do the red section and it said I was allowed seven millimeters, no, I have to have a top ceiling of five millimeters applied. So if we drop this into some examples, here we have four potentials. The type of thing that will be in your uh, your homework questions during the course and in any exam question. So what I always do is next to my uh, set of answers, write down the equation so I remember and I don't accidentally forget to do something. So here we have one millimeter plus 0 0.1 times 10. So that gives me an allowable height of two mil but I've measured three millimeters in height. Therefore, that's incorrect. Next one. So we've got 0 0.1 times 21 would give me an allowance of 3.1 millimeters. Now here I've measured three millimeters, so that's acceptable to the spec. To finish off, we've got the last two. So I'm allowed 3.7 millimeters but I have measured four, so it's incorrect. And then this last one's a funny one because I've measured 5.4, but no matter what, I'm not allowed above five. So it's already a reject, but if we do the calculation, it would give me an allowance of 4.9. So I'm still rejectable to that because I've measured 5.4.